we do have another caller on standby. Welcome to Law Call, Roger. And what is your question tonight? Yes, um, I was walking into a business and they have a uh, handicap cut out on the sidewalk or wheelchairs. And I tripped over the edge of the concrete because there was no uh, markings or painted stripes or anything like that. And I tore my right knee up. I'm going to have to have surgery on my right knee. And I fractured my left hand. And I have to have surgery on my left hand. And uh, I notified the people. And they were just like, well, we can't do anything about it. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much for your, your call there. Um, you've heard his concern. Yeah. You wanna so, so I think what he needs to look at is get, get an attorney, and the attorney's probably going to have to get some sort of expert that's like an architect or building code type expert to see what is required in a situation with a handicap ramp as far as warnings go. Um, see, you know, what the angles are. See if the steps leading up to the ramp were up to code. See if the railings were correct. All of these things may be building blocks to prove that there was negligence or some sort of violation of a regulation or code that may help you prove your case. The other thing he talked about, uh, Harry, was he had two pretty severe injuries to his knee and I believe it was arm or wrist. And people don't realize how debilitating one of those claims are and it really depends on the type of job you do. And, and the example, you know, going back to law school is, I mean, you could you could lose a finger and it may not hurt someone in a certain type of job, but if you are a surgeon or you're a, you're a concert mm -hmm. pianist or something like that or a court that. reporter, mm -hmm. you could become 100% uh, vocationally dis disabled even though maybe it only affects 1% or 2% of your body. It really just depends on the person. It really does. I wanted to mention something though, you know, under Mississippi law, um, like in parking lots, cracks in the concrete or yes. curbs or slight um, elevation uh, differences, expansion joints, they're not considered unreasonably dangerous under Mississippi law, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> they're really normally encountered conditions. So you have harder cases when it's, oh, there was a crack in, 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 yeah. in the parking lot. But if you can combine it with something, poor lighting, well, it's at night, I couldn't see the crack, something like yes. that. You then can use another uh, situation to make a case. The, uh, the other thing, the last thing I'll add to that is it also depends where it happened. Okay, if it happened in a huge parking lot out in the corner at the last parking space, maybe not. But if it happened at the entrance and exit, and say there's only one entrance and exit, the law says in Mississippi you have to have a safe, it's called ingress and egress, but that just means entrance and exit in and out of the building because that's where they're inviting the customers into their store to spend money. And so it does depend on where in the parking lot it happened. We see that a lot in, in icing cases. That's right. Mm -hmm. During the winter time. Yeah. Uh, the way they don't, they don't properly de-ice the entry or exit way. Well, you can see if it's way down in the parking lot or something like that, they're not going to be able to do the entire parking right. lot. But they know you've got to come through the front door. They're they inviting you, you to come in the front exactly. door. They're taking your money. Right. And, we, and the way that our climate has been in these past winters, we're really having some winters. So, I mean, <laughs> we're being more and more forced to, you know, make it on into work, you know, even yeah. though we got a little ice coming. And so you see that a lot. You got to de-ice it or salt yeah, it. Yes, if, you got to make sure your entranceway is safe. Mm -hmm. All right. So.